Good evening. I'm John Larkin, speaking for your Kaiser Fraser dealer. Tonight, I'm going to take you back over one of the most thrilling experiences I've ever had. I'm going to show you what happened when we literally tried to tear the Henry J. to pieces. We put the Henry J. through some of the toughest, roughest tests in the world. The first test we made was down the Buck and Bronco Road. One mile of concrete washboard, an endless chain of brutal ruts built to shake the body bolts out of any ordinary car. Now, I'd seen the Henry J. take some mighty rough country roads, but never anything like this. She's hitting 15 jolting bumps every single second, and I never would have believed it if I hadn't watched the wheels. Up and down, they bounce like rubber balls. And yet, the Henry J.'s unique spring and frame construction soaked up the shock and gave a smooth, level flight ride. Even a slow motion picture doesn't reveal a single jolt or jounce. And how was the driver enjoying it? Well, he opened the door, and I was amazed when I saw the steering wheel. It was perfectly steady, completely under control. No shock, no road wander, no wiggle. Every inch of the way, the Henry J. took this buck and bronco road as though it were a smooth, new superhighway. And now that you've seen what I saw, I think you'll agree that the Henry J. is one of the world's toughest cars. Next week, I'll tell you about another dramatic test. And remember, the Henry J. is the smartest, the thriftiest, full-size car you can buy. With up to 30 to 35 miles a gallon, with monthly payments as low as $49. So tomorrow, go in and see your Kaiser Fraser dealer. Start driving the smart, new Henry J. right away. ...is on the road. Start driving America's first, safety-first car, the new 53 Kaiser Manhattan. Only Kaiser gives you the world's safest front seat with stronger, slimmer corner posts that eliminate blind spots, plus a new safety-first frame and chassis. See Henry Kaiser said to think big. When he wanted to start a car company, he was determined to tackle the big three. Known as Hurry Up Henry, he set out to beat Detroit's established car makers to market with a new car right after World War II. No challenge was too big, and no one could tell him that there wasn't enough time. He always found a way. Recognizing his lack of experience, he teamed up with a veteran automobile executive, Joe Fraser, to help him launch a new car company. Many industrialists thought America would slip back into an economic depression after the war ended. Kaiser didn't agree. He believed there was tremendous pent-up demand for consumer goods that hadn't been available in wartime. Returning servicemen would need hundreds of thousands of new homes, an array of consumer products, and millions of new cars and trucks. To nearly everyone's disbelief, Kaiser Fraser became the fourth best-selling car company by 1947, ahead of the other independents, Studebaker and Hudson. Kaiser was determined to conquer the auto industry, as he had done everything else. Joe Fraser cautioned his partner that the auto industry played by different rules, and sometimes it was better to let your competitors have a good year while you conserved your resources. Kaiser ignored Fraser and decided to borrow enough money to build 200,000 cars for 1949. He did this even though the big three were preparing to flood the market with a staggering array of new cars. Fraser said this was folly and left. It had taken several years for the majors to retool after the war. By 1948, they had new cars coming off the production line. Fraser's gloomy predictions turned out to be true. Sales plummeted in 1949 to 58,000 cars. But Kaiser had one more model ready that some hoped would help save the company. The Kaiser Darien, a gloss fiber bodied roadster with sliding doors, was stunning. It was designed by noted automotive stylist Howard Dutch Darren who'd created some of the most beautiful cars in the world. But it was not enough. Kaiser had lost a reported $100 million in his 10 years in the automobile business. 
he shut down U.S. production in 1955. He was able to continue production of cars in Argentina, though the Kaiser Freezer Company was finished in the United States. Here's the assembly of the body of the automobile. Prior to this, the floor pans and roofs and hoods have been stamped out. Now they're being fed to the line. And now the doors are at. The doors were originally made by another branch of Kaiser, the Kaiser Metal Products Company near Philadelphia. The doors join the line here as the car begins to take shape. Other lines carrying component parts, chassis, engine, trim, and so forth keep the pace converging at various points. Here the roof is joined to the body, and now you see the windshield put into place. And right here, you're going to see the most dramatic phase turning out of a car. That's the body drop, so-called, the lowering of the body into place. At this point, this body, which has traveled along a separate line, is joined for the first time with a chassis. By now, the chassis contains the four wheels, the engine, the steering column, and other basic equipment. Here's the front of the car coming down. It, too, has been traveling its own private line until it joins the main line here. Kaiser Fraser is the only auto plant, the only auto plant, where bodies are stamped, shaped, assembled, upholstered, painted, and trimmed under one roof. A total of 84 presses, ranging up to 1,500 tons capacity. It stamped the body, roof, and floor panels to feed the body fabricating line. And so, from this 4 million square foot factory have rolled more than 700,000. stop now. I'm coming from a preview of the new 54 Kaiser, and I've got to get over to the paper and write the story. Hey, they call it the new car with the big change, don't they? Right. There's a big change in styling, front, back, and inside. And there's more room and comfort than ever before. Man, the new Kaiser is luxurious. How about the new Kaiser's power? Oh, there's a big change there, too, with new super power. The Kaiser has a revolutionary new engine that gives you power on demand. It's like having two engines in one. For normal driving, you get Kaiser's famous economy. But when you need an extra burst of power and pickup for passing, or for zooming up hills, you get it on demand. Oh, that sounds exciting, Marty. And tonight, we are privileged to salute Kaiser as an outstanding member of our Autolite family. Autolite is proud of its long association with Kaiser and Kaiser dealers everywhere. Production. Production expertly planned. Kaiser Fraser planned, producing Kaiser and Fraser cars as fast as quality production permits. In making cars, if the supply of parts breaks down, production stops. To keep their production lines moving, Kaiser Fraser not only buy from many suppliers, but manufacture many parts themselves. They control vast sources of essential raw materials. They control steel plants and rolling mills. A complete engine plant, they make their own bodies at Willow Run. Kaiser Fraser make many of their own parts, and so help ensure the supply of materials from beginning to end of their production line. And that's part of the story of what's being done at Willow Run in Michigan, the basic production story that explains why Kaiser Fraser dealers can and are delivering now. Yes, go to your Kaiser Fraser dealer. You can choose the car you like best. The Kaiser, the Fraser, and remember, your Kaiser Fraser dealer is delivering now. Here's the assembly of the body of the automobile. Prior to this, the floor pans and roofs and hoods have been stamped out. Now they're being fed to the line. And now the doors are at. The doors were originally made by another branch of Kaiser, the Kaiser Metal Products Company near Philadelphia. The doors join the line here as the car begins to take shape. Other lines carrying component parts, chassis, engine, trim, and so forth keep the pace converging at various points. Here the roof is joined to the body, and now you see the windshield put into place. And right here, you're going to see the most dramatic phase turning out of a car, that's the body drop, so-called, the lowering of the body into place. At this point, this body, which has traveled along a separate line, is joined for the first time with a chassis. By now, the chassis contains the four wheels, the engine, the steering column, and other basic equipment. 
Here's the front of the car coming down. It too has been traveling its own private line until it joins the main line here. Kaiser Fraser is the only auto plant, the only auto plant, where bodies are stamped, shaped, assembled, upholstered, painted, and trimmed under one roof. A total of 84 presses, ranging up to 1,500 tons capacity, that stamp the body, roof, and floor panels to feed the body fabricating line. And so, from this 4 million square foot factory have rolled more than 700,000 